In January of 2023, NPR.org ran a piece called End-of-Life Doulas Are Working to Make Conversations About Death Easier. It tells the story of a death doula and her client, Kelly. One quote from the piece refers to a death doula who, quote, plays a singing bowl in the room. As the sound rises, she steps forward and rubs some perfume over Kelly's heart. People Magazine ran an article in March of this year called How This End-of-Life Doula Helps People Have a More Meaningful and Beautiful Death. An excerpt from that article says, In a candlelit room, Martha Heyman has set up a makeshift altar at the bedside of her client. The article continues, She picks up a Tibetan singing bowl and strikes it three times, marking the beginning of a ritual. The Philadelphia Inquirer recently described death doulas as part spiritual teacher, part practical helpers. I'd like to present another perspective. Welcome to Death Becomes Her, the mini-cast where we spend five to ten minutes discussing death, dying, and grief from a variety of angles. I'm your host, Lyella Kelly. As you know, I'm an end-of-life doula. I live in Helena, Montana, which despite being the state capital is still quite small. I recently polled the community and found that 55% of those surveyed had no idea what a death doula was. And with good reason, end-of-life doulas are rare in these parts. For that reason, educating my community about end-of-life doulas is an important part of my job. I'm spreading the word through speaking engagements, community outreach, blog posts, social media, and this little podcast. Admittedly, it is a big job, so I am really grateful whenever an article is written that exposes a larger audience to the concept of -of end-of-life doulas. And people are taking notice. Usually when one of my clients sees the topic in the media, they share it with me. A couple of times a comment has been made to the effect, I saw this piece about death doulas, but it doesn't really sound like you. I'd have to say that I agree. So today, I'd like to share a bit about how I doula, as it were, and the variety that is to be found amongst the doula ranks. First, let's talk about the etymology of the word doula. It comes from a Greek word which means female slave or servant. By definition, an end-of-life doula is a servant specifically for the end of life, just as a birth doula serves people through the beginning of life. That is a pretty broad umbrella, end-of-life servant. It could mean and does mean different things to different people. I liken it to massage therapy. I have been a practicing massage therapist for 23 years. During that time, I have known a lot of therapists. We all bear the same title, and yet we all practice differently. Some are very spiritual in their practice. They may employ metaphysical and energy therapies in combination with therapeutic touch. On the other hand, there are massage therapists like me that offer a more clinical approach, often referred to as a Western approach. You'll find all of us listed together on Google, but our modalities are very different. And because we have varying approaches, we attract different clientele. We tend to draw people who share a philosophy similar to our own. I find parallels in the death doula world. As you meet a variety of providers, you're likely to find that not all doula styles will mesh with who you are, your ideals and philosophies. In my doula practice, the same as in my massage therapy practice, I may be a great fit for one person and a terrible match for the next. That's just how interpersonal relationships and services work. But as I mentioned earlier, we are all under the same umbrella. We all share the same goal. How we get there will vary, but ultimately we are all trying to help people die better. The tagline for the Death Becomes Her podcast is talking about death won't kill you, I promise. This refrain is repeated among end-of-life doulas, 
we encourage and promote open conversations about death and mortality with the objective that as communities, we will become more comfortable in the face of death and that that comfort will lead to better support of the dying and the bereaved. As doulas, we also find practical ways to support the dying and their care community. This will differ from doula to doula and will change from client to client because the services we provide are personalized to each individual's situation. Again, same ultimate goal, but a myriad ways to achieve it. For a little context and clarification, I'll give you an example of how this looks in my practice, which by the way, I call leaving well. After I've met a client and we have decided that we're going to work together, we'll examine their current situation and what is expected in the future. Based on those expectations, we'll discuss their goals, both physically and emotionally. This will include things like where they will ideally spend their final months, weeks, days, and hours, who will be present during those times, and what will their roles be? What fears and anxieties are they experiencing? For example, a person might be scared that death will be painful. In that case, it's important that their medical team is aware of that concern so that they can make an effective care plan. I'll talk with my client about everything I can think of, every possible need I or they can come up with, and then together we'll create a plan to implement their wishes as well as to make sure that their entire care team is clear on their goals of care. This may require family meetings or other means of communication, whatever it takes to ensure that the entire care community knows what's most important to the dying person and how best to support them as their life draws to a close. Once the plan is established, we do our best to implement and stay on course. That isn't always easy because there are always unexpected variables that pop up, but with a clear objective in place, we'll modify as needed, and then refocus on the goals of care. That is a simplified, basic outline of how I doula, how I serve. Like I said, we all have our own style, so my path is likely to vary from that of another doula. Another area where I've noted a bit of confusion that I feel is just as important as who we are is who we are not. We are not medical professionals. We are not part of the hospice or medical care teams. We do not provide medical care or administer medications. Those duties are out of our scope of practice. We are also not funeral directors or mortuary professionals. We do not handle, care for, or transport dead bodies. Those services are mortuary services and are out of the scope of practice of death doulas. By allowing each professional to provide services without overstepping our own boundaries, we create a well-rounded, effective care community that supports the dying person, helping them to achieve a good death, whatever that means to them as an individual. No doubt, as the end-of-life doula role becomes better known, media outlets will report on who we are and what we do. While the rituals and singing bowls may seem more exotic and perhaps more interesting to report on than the doula next door approach that I favor, remember, there can be many paths to the same goal. Don't discount doulas as a whole just because you read something or meet someone who doesn't quite mesh with your style or your worldview. Whatever your style, there's a doula to match. And it might just be the plain Jane doula next door. Thank you for listening to the Death Becomes Her minicast. Connect with me, Lyella Kelly, at www.leavingwellmt.com. Special thanks to Roman Belov for our intro and outro music. Thank you for tuning in. And remember, talking about death won't kill you. I promise.